Here we have a review of the six trig ratios. The trig ratios are defined on a right triangle. Here we have a right triangle where angle C is the right angle. The side opposite C is called the hypotenuse. The, uh, we're looking at trig ratios for, an, for angle A. We've also labeled that as angle theta. The side opposite the angle theta, the one that theta is looking at, is uh, labeled as A, or the opposite side. The adjacent side, the adjacent leg, is, uh, is B, or the adjacent side. Now, there are six trig ratios, because we could pick any one of the three, hypotenuse, opposite, or adjacent, to be on the, uh, as the numerator in the ratio. And then once that's chosen, there's only two choices for the other uh, options. So notice, opposite ends up on top in two situations. And the possibilities for the bottom are hypotenuse or the adjacent. Uh, adjacent ends up in two situations for the cosine and the cotangent. And the... Uh, once the adjacent has been chosen for the numerator, then uh, the denominator is, on, is either going to be the hypotenuse or the opposite side. And finally, uh, the hypotenuse shows up in two, two cases, in the cosecant and the secant. Um, once you've chosen the, the hypotenuse to be the numerator, then the numerator could either be the opposite side or the adjacent side. So those are the six trig ratios. First three, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, we remember because of so katoa. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, S-O-H. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, C-A-H. Tangent is the opposite over adjacent. And all six of these you really need to have memorized. You need to know them. We've lined them up with the sine and the cosecant uh, referenced with each other. Notice they're reciprocals of one another. Where the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. That means that the sine is equal to 1 over the cosecant. The cosecant of an angle is equal to 1 over the sine of the angle. Similarly for the cosine and the secant, they're reciprocals of one another. And the tangent and the cotangent are reciprocals of one another. Those are called the reciprocal identities turn out to be really handy when you're doing things like uh, solving an equation with cosines in them or in, in other ways where you need to reduce or simplify a trigonometric expression. Summarizing some of the ideas that we've just observed. The sine and the cosecant are reciprocals. That means that we have the following identities. One is that the sine of an angle is equal to 1 over the cosecant of that angle. That's because those two are reciprocals of one another. Secondly, <clears throat> of course that also means equivalently that the cosecant of an angle is equal to 1 over the sine. Some other reciprocal relationships that we noticed was that the cosine and the secant are reciprocals of one another. So the cosine is going to be 1 over the secant of an angle. or equivalently that the secant of the angle is equal to 1 over the cosine. 
Finally, we notice that the tangent and the cotangents are reciprocals of one another. That means then that the tangent of an angle is equal to 1 over the cotangent of the angle. The reason that identities like this are important to us is because sometimes when we're solving an equation or otherwise needing to simplify an expression, we can use uh, trig identities to change the expression in some ways. The other part of this is that the cotangent, of course, of the angle is equal to 1 over the tangent. Now there's one other uh, reciprocal identity that we need to know, and that is that the tangent of an angle is the same thing as the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle. Now, from time to time, you will be asked to, uh, to prove an identity. So let's talk a little bit about good form or style in proving an identity. We'd like to prove this identity. That the, ta the nice form for doing that is to start with one side of the identity and show how to logically get to the other side of the identity. Usually, it's advantageous to start with the more complicated side. I'm going to think of the sine over the cosine as being the more complicated of the two. So I'll begin with that. Now, we know that the sine is, by definition, the opposite over the hypotenuse. We know that the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, and some of you are already seeing what's going to happen here then, is that we know how to divide two fractions. That's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. times the reciprocal of this is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. Because we're multiplying fractions here, this common factor on the bottom cancels with this common factor on top, and we're left with the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is by definition the tangent. Okay, so we've proved that identity. Okay, there we are, the, the key reciprocal identities that, uh, that you need to know.